So, what you're seeing here, pretty obvious. This is another rig, another version of Rick. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to call this Rick has done it again. And all they do is that they continue to vindicate claims and they continue to vindicate information that I've already put forth. Now, I'm not going to pull up on YouTube just yet. I don't think I might pull it up in any way at all. But I made a video earlier this week called Rick, Hindi, Chinny, Rushi, Bye Bye. And I couldn't, for whatever reason, put my finger on it. But I knew that even though the, that Rick didn't get viewed like that, that the powers that be that do want to know and desire to know what I have to say about the situation have looked into it. Now, China Xi urges people in Tibet to follow the party and rare visit. Now, I need to, this is cold. Now, y'all going to think about this, y'all. I dropped my video on July 19th, right? This is from, well, we'll read it. But y'all will start to understand. China President Xi Jinping made his first visit to the Tibet Autonomous Region as national leader this week and urged people there to follow the party, the official Xinhua news agency said on Friday. Xi's July 21st, 22nd visit for the first time to Tibet by a Chinese leader in three decades comes as the country faces increased security concerns as a result of clashes with India and the withdrawal of U.S.-led troops from Afghanistan. The visit also shows the ruling Chinese Communist Party's confidence in having reestablished order and gained support in the once restive region, analysts say. Xi, fl Xi flew into the city of Nianchi on Wednesday and took, and took a train to the Tibetan capital of Lhasa. The following day, along a section of high of the high elevation railroad being built to link the mountainous border region with the Shikwan province. In Lhasa, Xi visited a monastery in the Potala Palace Square and inspected ethnic religion work and Tibetan cultural heritage protected, according to Xinhua. The palace is the traditional home of Tibetan Buddhism spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, who is, an, who is in exile and has been branded a dangerous separatist by Beijing. State television, state television network, state television network CCTV, closed circuit TV, showed a Tibetan woman wiping away tears as she joined a crowd of people dressed in traditional costume, clapping enthusiastically to welcome Xi. Xi instructed local provincial officials to work towards making people in Tibet identify more with the great motherland, Chinese people, Chinese culture, the great, excuse me, the the, the, the Chinese Communist Party and socialism with Chinese characteristics, according to Xinhua. Now, the only problem with that is that, is that the Tibetan monks, remember, we read this in, in the last raid, that they were supposed to be left alone, and they weren't, right on? And the Indian government took blame for why this didn't happen. Now, note, Buddhism, Buddha, Siddhartha Watama, comes from India. So the reason why they don't want people being real actual Buddhists is because that's an Indian religion. Let's just go ahead and break it down. He also said that only when the people follow the party can the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation be realized. Culture and loyalty. Over 80% of the over 80% of the population in Tibet are ethnic Tibetan, while Han Chinese are the minority. That means that most of them are actually Indian or have an Indian heritage. Most Tibetans are also Buddhist. China's constitution allows for freedom of religion, but the party adheres strictly to atheism. You hear that? China's constitution allows for freedom of religion, but the party adheres strictly to atheism. That's a lie. That's a lie. They're Mongols, right on? They believe in shamanistic stuff, but they're not going to tell you that they believe in shaman rituals. In Lhasa, 
Z watched a cultural performance which showcased Tibetan culture and loyalty to the party through song and dance, including a famous song with the lyric, Sing a folk song for the party. The party is like my mother. In the Ying Chi, Z also inspected rural rejuvenation and environmental protection. On China's border with India, Tibet is, is, is seen as having critical strategic importance to Beijing. Last year, China and India saw the most serious clash in decades over their disputed border in the Himalayas with deaths on both sides. And the Chinese got the best of the Indians, but the Indians actually won in that struggle. Doesn't because because it showed China that we're number one, we're nuclear powered. And so it's, it's just China has to be reminded that you're not the big dog in the region. That's all India was doing. That's it. And and the Indians are not Mongols, so they don't have a hyper-aggressive mentality. You understand? Beijing sent troops in Tibet in 1950. And what is a and what it officially terms, excuse me, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go back. Photos released by Xinhua Shouzi, accompanied by Zhang by Zhang Yu by Zhang Yuzia or Yao Zia, uh, a vice president of China's central China's Central Military Commission and a senior general in the PLA. Zhang Yuzia? Something like that. Z was last in Tibet in 2011 when he was vice president. Ten years ago he was there, y'all. Beijing sent troops into Tibet in 1950 in what it officially terms a peaceful liberation and maintains a heavy security presence in the region which has been prone to unrest. A violent clash in 2008 between Chinese police and Tibetan monks commemorating on the anniversary of the 14th Dalai Lama's exit from Tibet left local authorities unsure for many years if a visiting Chinese leader would be welcome or safe, said Yang Chawi, professor of politics at Peking University. Tibet's high altitude, which can take a toll on leaders not accustomed to the climate, is another reason why China's Top, leader, top leaders rarely visit, he said. Stop right there. Well, let's just go back up to this right here. You see that date right there? Let's highlight that. July 21st, 22nd, right? Now, you can say whatever. You can say it's the flooding in China that led this man to go here. Y'all can say whatever. Okay? It's YouTube time. I said I wouldn't do it. I went back on my word. I lied. Or maybe I just went back on me saying I wouldn't do it because at first I said I would. Come on. Either way, still not being completely honest. Anyhow, content. You know I don't get no 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 real love, but I just want y'all to see. Let's go ahead and go down. There we go. Look, it's only got twenty two views, but this was published on the nineteenth. Okay, it's thirty eight minute hit. It's a hit. Now, the reason why, let's see, let's just go back. One more, one more back. There we go. The reason why I say what I say, because can't nobody convince me that this was already set up on the calendar. Wasn't brought up, wasn't even made mention of at all. Word? But the I know I talked about Tibet in that 38-minute hit for most of the hit. Listen, y'all. At some point, you have to recognize that your dude is not tripping. I'm not going to get into all the different little things. I don't have to. Right on? Xi's face tells you he's not a full-blown mongoloid. He has mongoloid blood, but he's not a full-blown mongoloid. You can just look at him and tell. Next article. No, let's read this one first. I like this one. Russia disconnected itself from the rest of the Internet. A test of its new defense from cyber warfare, report says. Now, there's a major part of this article we're going to stop and emphasize for a little bit that has no thing to do with Rick, has everything to do with the Internet, and more proof that the Internet is some sort of spirit. Spirit or spirits? Russia tested disconnecting itself from the global Internet. Russian outlet RBC Daily said. It said the disconnect happened from mid-June to July, though Insider couldn't verify that. 
Russia wanted total control over the Internet to avoid U.S. firms and potential cyber attacks. Russia successfully... T- no, I'm going to say that cyber attacks... I can't stress this enough. When Rick does do whatever they're going to do, they're going to set off some sort of EMP, massive EMP, or or, or uh, maybe even an aerial EMP that that uh, that is like nanite technology that attaches to whatever level of frequency and destroys the entire frequency from there. Anyway... I'm not going to get too carried away with all the science and all that, but it's coming. Russia successfully tested disconnecting itself from the global Internet, according to a report by the RBC Daily newspaper, business newspaper. RBC Daily says it obtained documents and spoke to sources who told them that the tests were conducted from June 15 to July 15 and worked. One source told the outlet that the test included Russian physically disconnecting its network from the worldwide Internet. Ruder says it's unclear how long the disconnection lasted or whether it was noticeable to Russian residents. It was not able to independently verify the RBC Daily Report. Insider was not able to to independently verify the RBC Daily Report. So saying that nobody actually told them, but they have to take RBC's word for it. Russia has long been working on bringing more of its Internet infrastructure under national control. Listen to this. This is how we know that the shit is spirit or spirits. The regular Internet is decentralized and not under the control of any single entity, making it hard for countries to restrict how it is used. Let me read that to y'all again. This is a spirit, y'all. The regular Internet is decentralized and not under the control of any single entity, making it hard for countries to restrict how it is used. Laws banning certain sites or actions are often circumvented via networks in other countries. In 2019, Russia's Soviet Internet law came into effect, which gave the government power to disconnect the country from global Internet in the face of a cyber attack. Because the law is vague over what constitutes a threat, critics said what a step what, what was a step towards the heavily restricted model of Internet use enforced in China. When the law was first proposed in 2019, there were protests in the country. One part of the law was a requirement that Russian Internet service providers, ISPs, install deep package inspections, DPI tools, within the country. That allows providers to locate the source of web traffic, reroute, and block them if needed. Now, that allows them to pull up on your ass, you feel me, and snatch you out your fucking house if you're doing some dumb shit. The Moscow, or, or that too, I should say. The Moscow Times reported in 2019 that the new DPI technology, okay, deep package inspection, meaning spying on your ass, has been tested in the Euro region in September 2019. It cited that Novaya Gazeta newspaper as saying the trials were unsuccessful, with many internet users unable to bypass the traffic monitoring technology. Unsuccessful being that they don't want people to be able to, to, to tell that they're off the internet. Russia wants, that's cold. That's vicious. So, you know, y'all remember me talking about Google in my last part, right? In the Hindi Chini Rusi Bye Bye, right? I know y'all remember. I know y'all remember me bringing up, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sergey Brin, whose parents are Jewish, born out of Russia. Yerp. Come on. Anyway. I'm going to push the envelope on this for a little bit. My man, Vladdy the Laddie Putin, right? Looking like a white mongoloid with a little bit of nigga in him. I'm going to tell y'all something. The reason why they're blocking their stuff off from the rest of the earth is because they want, and for no one to be able to tell, because they want to be able to confuse the U.S. one day and all their allies and launch the coldest cyber attack that ain't nobody ever heard of or thought of. The type of stuff I be imagining in my mind is what they're trying to do. And then, from there, it's going to be the bloodiest day ever. Don't worry. The day of bloodshed is coming. And whether these Gentiles want to say that they're atheists, whether they want to say that they're Christians, I ain't going to bring up the stuff where Russia's uh, attacking the Jehovah Witnesses, because I ain't no Jehovah's Witness. But just the fact that they would attack them for not being mainstream Christians or just not You see what I'm saying? All these cats want you to believe what they believe, yet folks will tell you that religion is not important. The, ch- the, 
the Chinese Communist Party, they're saying they're mainly atheists. But we don't know that. I already read y'all history about, I read to y'all the history about these Mongols. Word. How they still eat blood and everything. Right? Word. How they, how, how they practice that. You see what I'm saying? People wondering why they're so fucked up to the U years. I, I've already read all that to you. So you got to understand it. Now, boom. So we're going to block this one down. No, we ain't going to read the Taliban just yet. We're going to read this one. This is a pretty... On office. Yeah, it's a pretty quick read. We'll just read on through it. China, Afghanistan, top blink in agenda on India, Kuwait trip. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel to India and Kuwait next week for talks on China, the coronavirus, and Afghanistan, the State Department said Friday. The trips come as Biden administration seeks to shore up U.S. leadership in vaccinating the world against COVID-19, tries to blunt increasing Chinese assertiveness, and moves to evacuate vulnerable people from Afghanistan before the U.S. military withdrawal is complete. The State Department said Blinken will meet with Indian Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi on, in, in New Delhi on Wednesday before traveling to Kuwait City the next day. India, come on, is a key part in the U.S. efforts to counter China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region and elsewhere. State Department spokesman Ned Price said the agenda in Delhi would include COVID-19 response effort, Indo-Pacific engagement, shared regional security interests, shared democratic values, and addressing the climate crisis. Now, the reason why he's saying what he was saying is because they're trying to give the Indians the COVID vaccine and tell them, don't take it from the Chinese. Take, take this from us so they can try to keep, you know, the beef between China and India. But it's not really a beef, y'all. I'm telling it's a beef, but it's not what you think. Or it's about bloodlines and royalty from way back in the day. And a lot of these cats don't respect nothing. Man, bless be the most high God. Man, I tell the devil to get behind me. I bless the most high God because I, 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 I do this work for a reason. This is God's work, what I'm doing. Read to stuff to people that who might otherwise not get the information and then disseminate it for them so that way they're not confused by what they're hearing. Blinken will be seeking India's support and stabilizing Afghanistan after the U.S. military withdrawal is completed at the end of August. So they're going to try to use India to go up in there because, you know, India is super close. According to Dean Thompson, the top U.S. diplomat for South and Central Asia, we expect that, in, that we expect that all countries in the region have shared interest in a stable and secure Afghanistan going forward. And so we will clearly be looking at talking with our Indian partners about how we can work together to realize that goal, he told reporters. Now, let me just go ahead and break something down to y'all. I used to tell you all the time about what happened with the Chinese getting beat down by the Russians first out out of Afghanistan and how the Russians got their asses beat by everybody else. Word. Afghanistan, for all intents and purposes, has never been stable. Word. And the last stabilized government they had was toppled. Right. So, I just think it's weird, man. There's a, there, don't worry, I'm going to read the, the article that's coming up next about it and then we'll see how people really feel. Blinken also will be, no, it'll be the second, it'll be after the next article. Blinken also will be looking to set up a meeting of the leaders of the so-called Quad, a group that includes Australia, India, Japan, and the U.S. President Joe Biden hosted a virtual command, a virtual Quad, that's really a troika, submit earlier this year, focused on the coronavirus pandemic and threats posed by China, but is hoping to arrange an in-person meeting by the end of the year. So this is what I think is funny. These two places, Australia and India, had for sure Aboriginal people in them. You know I'm saying, for sure, for sure. Japan, if you go to what is considered Okinawa, but Okinawa is its own place. There's a lot of people who who are a, a Negroid and Negro descent to this day. And the U.S. obviously had what on the land. That's right, Aboriginals who they murdered and they slaughtered. It's, it's, it's not by chance that they done that. Might be a by chance that I realized it. 
And I was blessed to see it, but that's not by chance they've done that. Meanwhile, Kuwait, along with Qatar, is one of several countries being eyed as a possible host for thousands of Afghans who work for the United States and want to be relocated to the U.S. before the complete withdrawal of American troops. This is why he's going to Kuwait. He's trying to set it up in Kuwait so that way he can try to get the people set up there and maybe even in, in India as well. But the the issue that I have with that is, is that, once again, could you imagine, you know, this being so-called America and then there being like individuals who, for all intents and purposes, would be considered traitors, not translators, but traitors, the other T word. Could you imagine? You know what I'm saying? You couldn't. Because nobody here would be even trying to hear that. And then people would be like, oh, you're all in our business. The Biden administration hopes to evacuate about 4,000 Afghans who served as translators and in other support roles for U.S. forces in Afghanistan and their families to American military bases in third countries while visas are processed. That's on top of roughly 2,500 Af Afghans who have already completed security vetting and will be housed in Fort Lee Army Base in Virginia, pending final approval of their visas starting next week. Did y'all hear that? 2,500 of these traders are going to get to come over here, then another 4,000 potentially. So almost 7,000 cats. I, I need y'all to think about that. That's a lot of people, man. That's a lot of people to, 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 to be a betrayer. And they can come with all oh, the Taliban turned on us and this, that, and the other. A lot of these dudes are doing it for money. So I don't respect none of that. Let's get out of here. We almost done. Don't worry, we almost done. It's gonna take yeah, it's gonna take some reading. It's gonna take a little bit of reading, but we almost done. And I'm not even gonna stress this one, this right here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you my Cliff Notes version of this. I'm just gonna close this down. The the, the Cliff Notes version of that article is. So I've already read these, so, you know, for me to read it again and again and again sometimes is just, you know, uh, aggravating. Uh, and it's just a little annoying. But anyway, um, the article pretty much says that this version of the Taliban is going to allow women to work and go to school and pretty much, like, live as, as what, what, what folks around the world what here in the West they consider a normal life. Women won't have to have a male escort and things like that of that nature. Now there's 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 parts in the articles where they're saying that there's certain regions where they're still practicing uh, the old school way of doing everything, very restrictive uh, uh, Shia law. You know, what I'm saying? you know, uh, 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 Sharia law. There we go. Yeah, that's what they call it. I right think. And uh, so they don't want to hear that right on. They're like, that's not real. But there's but the, but the Taliban are pretty much saying, like, look, cause we'll let y'all do what you need to do, because the last regime, they they pretty much miscalculated. You know what I'm saying? And they misjudged. They didn't understand. You know, what, what, what they're trying to say is we're going to move forward with the times for right now until we have complete power. But they're not going to let. The government that's in right now, they're like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna let any kind of treaty for peace even be talked about until we get a new government, because this government supported the United States government, and they allowed for our country to be ravaged, our women to be ravaged, for for for, for all of our land, everything to be taken over and destroyed. So we're not gonna allow for the blood of our young uh, 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 martyrs, and patriots, patriots to go uh, uh, spill in vain. And that is more honorable than I can say for the United States withdrawing from um, Afghanistan in a very unceremonious way. Now, we're going to see what Russia, China, and Iran want in Afghanistan when U.S. troops leave. Now, the reason why I have this up is not really to read it to you. It's to read some, but it's really so that way, so way y'all can see. All of these cats have a common ancestor somewhere in all of their bloodlines. More than likely, it's a Mongol person, Mongol Gentile, whatever. Um, as these plans take form, Newsweek has contacted officials from three countries. Oh, I skipped some stuff. 
Russia, China, and Iran, all influential powers in Asia, are preparing for the U.S. military to leave Afghanistan at a time of aggravated tensions and soaring violence in the war-torn nation, which they have unique and historical ties. Stop right there. I think I've read enough for most of y'all, but I'm going to read the very first part of each one. For Russia, this means stepping up to a long-standing engagement in a country where it has a modern history of intervention and withdrawal. We'll talk about the ancient history, right? Let's just go ahead and skip on down. I don't even want to hear about them failing to uh, to make it happen in Afghanistan and getting beat down out. China's history with Afghanistan dates back even further than that of Russia. Centuries ago, Kabul was a hub on the Silk Road that spanned through Asia. Now, who's read this stuff to y'all? Let's go ahead and just keep pushing. Iran. Iran's connection to neighboring Afghanistan are in some ways deeper, still imbued not only in historic, historic links, but cultural, even linguistic connections as well. Stop right there. I'm talking about Farsi. I'm talking about the language of Farsi and even some of the Pashtun people. Anyway, look, 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 look. Let's read that part again. Russia, China, and Iran. Skip. Have unique and historical ties. Come on. Now, who has read this stuff? To, who has broke it down to y'all about the Ilkhanate, the Mongols? Come on, you feel me? The Khans. Who done put it? Who has put it together like that? And the Khazars. I wish y'all could see my see me doing the little uh, uh, damn uh, uh, um, hand thing with you know the, the, the little crazy mobsters do. You know what I'm saying, right? When they be putting a little hand up. I'll, who told y'all? Or but me. This one. Matter of fact, bump that. This one. I told you. Word? I, I put it all on the line. I put it all on the line all the time. That's why I I'm so not aggravated right now. I'm just like, dude, what do y'all think is about to happen? Like, what do y'all think? There's no need for me to read any of that. If I Desire to pull up the links. I'll pull up all the links. They'll be in that video. Don't worry. And then we'll see how people feel. <laughs> I love it. This, this, this is why, you know, and another one. And another one. And another one bites the dust. Come on, let's break it down. Rick did several things this week. I ain't even going to read about Iran's Navy pulling up in Russia's port. Come on, to celebrate the naval uh, holiday today. Come on, we're going to leave that be. I ain't going to bring up the fact that the Russians, the Chinese, and probably shadow Iranian uh, 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 parties are all invested into Africa right now. So deep that it has the United States super duper concerned. Come on. This is what I do. This is what I do with my time. Look, Rick is going to vindicate me again. I'm waiting for the next great vindication. Salute to everybody that understands this. Salute to all those who don't. Right on. Salute. 